today's reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 6, starting at verse 48. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. <clears throat> then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. Unless you can eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we're going to be starting a, a new sermon series, uh, and this sermon series is um, going to be about communion. Uh, it's something that we want to reintroduce into this service, but we felt it would be really good to just spend a few weeks looking at what communion is and what it means, uh, and that we can um, then have more sense of, um, to understand its uniqueness and specialness as we go about um, celebrating communion. Second Sunday of the month always used to be a communion service here at this service. Um, but uh, we, after the pandemic, it it's became apparent that some people weren't quite sure um, what, we, what was actually going on. And so we felt that we needed to bring some teaching into that. Uh, we also needed to make sure that um, new children that had come through have been um, taught. Because at this church, we allow people to have communion before, con before they're confirmed, before confirmation. What is confirmation? Oh my, this is just going on and on, isn't it? So what is confirmation? Well, confirmation uh, is uh, when, as a, a person, you take um, the promises that were made for you at your baptism on for yourself. So in, in a similar way that how the Jews used to have their children, uh, had their uh, son circumcised and all the blessings and promises were made on behalf of that child that they would have all of the blessings of God on them um, from then onwards and then there was the bar mitzvah when they would then take on those promises for themselves and say my parents made those promises now I've come to an age where I can make those promises for myself. That's what confirmation is. It's a place of being able to take those promises on for yourself. And if you've never been confirmed and you would like the opportunity to publicly confirm your faith, that would, we can organise that for you as well. Just come and chat to me afterwards. Um, we get a bishop along to come and do that. And they pray for the Holy Spirit to come and enter you at the same time. We do that all the time, but it's a, a special service where they, uh, the bishop comes and does that. Where you join officially the Church of England family, as it were. Holy Communion, where did it originate from? It's one of the things that we're going to be looking at. And what does it mean? Why is it so important as an individual? It reminds us that Jesus loves us. As a, as a family, it's like the family meal that we can, uh, and that we're part of something bigger. But also to remember that this is part of the universal church. All around the world, people come together and celebrate communion together. 
uh, and to know what it means and the symbolism of that uh, helps us to join in with all that the fam family of the church worldwide are doing. This is, this is, John, this is making a bit of a noise, this one. Can you give me the other clip? I'll just go on the lecture mic for now. Is the lecture mic on? Thank you. Maybe I'll just use the lecture mic, John. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. And going forward as a church, we just want to use this as a, an opportunity to do the teaching so that we can uh, enjoy spending time in communion at the moment. At the moment, uh, it happens uh, at our nine o'clock service every week uh, and sometimes at our 6.30. We also want to work with um, the parents here as well to allow children to receive um, communion before confirmation. As I said, that's something which we've got um, permission from, from the diocese to do that. But we want, to, we want the parents to understand what communion is uh, and to talk with your children about this so that they will get some uh, information uh, and an opportunity to come together and to learn about what communion is about. And then as a family, you make the decision whether you feel that this is something that's right for your family. So that when, when you come forward, you know whether your children are meant to be receiving the bread or not. Because sometimes there's a bit of confusion and people come forward uh, and I go, do they receive? And I go, I'm not sure. Uh, and so for you to have an opportunity to discuss that as family so that you know where you all stand on that and, where you, and what your children think. Where's the level of their faith? Sometimes children's faith can be above their parents. Uh, and so it's good to have that kind of conversation about, you know, is this something that you would like to do? Why would you like to do that? So where did this whole meal come from? It comes from the context of the, of the, the Jewish faith. It comes from the context of when the Jews were in um, Egypt and it comes out of the Passover meal and uh, the, after the plagues Moses and the people of Egypt they escape that oppressive regime they escape being slaves and they, they come through the Red Sea together and the drama of the Red Sea is uh, very dramatic and uh, uh, they're there on the, on the banks of, uh, of the Red Sea and they can see the dust being um, bellowing up as uh, the Egyptians are coming towards them and they're trapped. The people of God are trapped inside uh, in, by, the, by the Red Sea. And as they're trapped there and the, the Egyptians are coming towards them, Moses with his stick touches the Red Sea on the command of the Lord and it parts and they walk through the Red Sea that's not something you see every day is it so it's a very it's, it's in the forefront of the Jewish people because it's not something you see every day that's exactly the point and so they go through the Red Sea they get to the other side and as they get to the other side the waters come back over just as the Egyptians are going through the Red Sea and they are swallowed up in the water well that drama revealing God's protection for his people was followed by some kind of worship party of thankfulness, uh, of songs as they were praising God of what they had just witnessed God do for them. That's the context of uh, where this is all coming from. And as um, they find themselves out of the clutches, out of the reaches now of the Egyptians, they find themselves in the desert and like all human beings, they start to grumble. They start to moan. As the ongoing realities of what life was now like starts to hit them. As they start to settle into this new way of life, 
There's a culture shock for them. Maybe panic. And they remember the past. And they go, well, maybe it wasn't so bad in Egypt after all. At least we, we were able to know where to get our food. And uh, even though, yeah, we were slaves. But, uh, and everything became a bit rose-tinted for them about as they looked back to the past. But God wasn't going to let them stay in that place. He wanted to show them that he was not only a God of protection, but he's also a a God who provided as well. And so they found this white, flaky stuff, which they called manna. And they were told, each day, go and collect some, and that will be enough to feed you and your family. Uh, uh, But only take what you need for the day. Uh, uh, And then on... On the day before the Sabbath, actually collect two days' worth, uh, and you can, that will stay over there. But just take what you need. I will provide for you on a daily basis. This is not a one-off. Well, some people didn't quite get it, and um, they saw this white food, and so they just took as much as they could. They ate it, and what was left over went moldy. Because they didn't trust that God would continue to provide for them all of the time, their disobedience meant that they had moldy food. And they had to try and deal with that. Whereas those who had been obedient didn't have to worry about moldy food. They just went and got the new fresh stuff. Trusting that God provides for us is a major part as well. And communion reminds us that God provides for us in the person of Jesus. God provided for them, and God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he provides for us. And ultimately, his provision for us has been through Jesus. The Bible reading today, uh, in verse 49, actually, just before I come to that, it, it could seem like quite a weird reading, uh, unless you understand what it's about. Eating flesh and drinking blood of humans is not something I would recommend. But if you, if you read this, Jesus saying, drink my, drink my blood and eat my flesh, it's kind of like a bit, of, it's a bit weird, isn't it? And uh, actually the Romans 2,000 years ago found it really weird. And it's one of the things that really scared them about the, the Christians is that they didn't understand the symbolism of what was going on and they they just heard that there was this sect that ate flesh and drank blood and it it caused a bit of confusion uh, for some of the some of the Romans at the time but what Jesus was trying to do is he was trying to make the Passover meal which we will go into later in the sermon series more real for them and he said I am the sacrificial lamb I'm the flesh I'm the blood of that In verse 49, he says, Your forefathers ate manna in the desert, yet they died. Jesus is reminding them that God provides for them. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. And this wasn't news to the Jews. They all knew that. All those Jews who were listening, they knew this. This, this was something which is like the bedrock of what their faith was all about. But Jesus is saying in this passage, I'm more significant though. Because they died when they had this manna. However, if you eat from me, eat, he was, eat from Jesus' words, from his teachings, through his salvational acts. If we eat through him, I am the bread of life. If we eat through him, we will have everlasting life. Jesus is saying, I am more significant. And that would have just blown the mind of those who were listening because going through the Red Sea, eating the manna and and subsequent quails and such like, 
uh, was, was a, a most significant bedrock of their faith. And for Jesus to go, <laughs> that's nothing. They died after that. I'm more important. Would have been mind-blowing to them. And many would have just walked away going, he is out of his mind. Jesus provides life through himself. That's what he's saying. The church is a place where we have an opportunity for a worship party of thankfulness as we remember what Jesus has done for us. The church can be a worship party of thankfulness uh, as we remember God's protection and provision for us through Jesus. There's a, a phrase that goes around, which is sometimes linked to this style of service, which is called happy clappy. Uh, and uh, it's almost done in a, in a derogatory term um, because uh, not everyone finds God in this kind of environment. And unfortunately, they feel that they need to to put down this style of service, um, which is unfortunate because I, I think different people meet with God in different ways. And so that's why in this, in this church we have four totally different styles of service. Um, the 6.30 is probably the closest to this one other than this one. Uh, but we believe that different people meet God in different ways and so we want to help people to do that. We want... St. Mark's to be a place where people can connect with God, as I said right at the beginning. And so to put down other styles of worship service is not helpful. Because it's between that community of believers and God how they connect with God. And so I, I don't, in the same way that Happy Clappy's not a helpful term, neither are smells and bells, which is um, normally the comeback from happy clappy churches. Um, now, we don't have smells and bells here. That, um, that's sort of like incense and uh, tinging the, the little bells during communion. We don't do that. We don't go that far, far uh, into the tradition of the Anglican way. But there are plenty of churches that do. And if people connect with God there, why would I stop them? Because it's all about connecting with God. But yet somebody, God has called me here. And so there's something about my spirituality, I believe, that God wants to bring to St. Mark's during this, this era, during this time. He's called me here because maybe of my breadth that we can bring together a, a wider way of worship and connecting with God. And communion is something that is particularly special to me. I find it a particularly meaningful act. And so I want to reintroduce it into all our services at some stage. So no one's denied the opportunity to receive the bread and the wine, the family meal. Being family is one of our values here at St. Mark's. And so to share in the family meal together is an important part of that, I think. Church is an opportunity for a worship party of thankfulness to remember God's protection and provision through Jesus. It's important within a communion service that we remember the symbols and the reminders of what it represents. And so that's why I think taking a few weeks looking at this is an important thing for us to do as we, I think it'll be helpful. Uh, and for those who 
who know all about it and can teach me a thing or two about it. I think it'd be good just to be reminded of the significance of what communion is. Now, there are different names. We, we tend to call it communion here. But you'll come across other names like Eucharist, that means thanksgiving. Uh, the Catholic Church will talk about mass. But it's all the same thing. It's all about remembering what Jesus has done for us and receiving from him the bread and the wine, his body and his blood and accepting God's protection and provision for us. So whilst the ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, we are thankful that we receive from the bread of life Jesus himself. Would you please stand? If you're spiritually hungry, ask Jesus to come and feed you. He is the bread of life. He's the only one who can satisfy you. So come, Lord Jesus. Come and feed us. That we would be satisfied. Let us know the truth of who you are that you would continue to draw us into your love. <clears throat> Come, Lord Jesus.